What's up, goats? Welcome to season two of Startup Hype Man's Goat to Market Show. I'm your host, Startup Hype Man, founder and chief pitch artist, and of course I go by the name Raj Nation. This season we've got a special treat for you. If you haven't already heard, I officially dropped the album Goat to Market, the first ever hip hop album about you, founders, and about the life, startup life. Go to Market is an eight-song concept album telling the story of a founder's journey from idea to capital raise. It's a story of struggle to success, getting up after being knocked down, breaking down in order to break out, and dealing with the doubt, distractions, and detours, and route to dominating and becoming, well, the go. Now, a lot went into making this album, from the initial concepting, to the beat making, to the lyricism, to the overall storytelling, and someone who was instrumental in bringing it together was a man by the name Pablo Gonzalez. Pablo is the founder of Be The Stage, a company that specializes in creating digital word of mouth via streaming podcasts, interactive trade show booths to run podcasts live off the trade show floor, online content, and so much more. And Pablo has become a good friend of mine over the last couple of years, and I decided to make him the creative director for the album. So think of his role almost as my creativity consultant, helping me get out of my head, helping me figure out the album's story arc, working with our producer. He even makes an appearance on one of the tracks. For this season of the GTM show, instead of me interviewing other guests, I'm actually the one being interviewed by Pablo. We talk about the album, the concepts and themes, the behind the lyrics, you know the deal. Listen, I put my heart and soul into this album, and this is my way of letting you inside my head. Haven't heard the album yet? Goat to Market is streaming everywhere. So if you're on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, Tidal, or any other random network, just search Goat to Market or Raj Nation and get ready to be taken on a musical journey. And if you want to chat with me directly about the album or about anything you're going through with your startup, whether that's pitching, figuring out your go to market strategy or something else, Remember, I'm just a DM away if you join our online founder community, the Goat to Market Club, at startuphypeman.com slash gtm dash club. Without further ado, I give you season two of the GTM show, appropriately titled Making the Goat. When we embarked on this project, the goal was to do an album. It's actually something that's been on my mind since 2017. So if you dial it back to then... I made it into the finalist to win this award for the Chicago Tribune's um, Red Eye publication, which is like their daily free newspaper that anyone who takes the CTA, the transit system, you're picking up a red eye like on your way onto the train because it's like the the stacks of papers are right there. And it's, you know, it's more red than the actual Tribune at this point. So they hosted this contest. It was called like the Red Eye Big Idea Awards. And I remember I was at 1871, which is the main incubator in Chicago. I was having a meeting with someone. And as I was walking out to leave, I saw a little flyer on one of the tables for the Red Eye Big Idea Awards. And it was like submissions due in, and it was like in two days. And I was like, oh, I should make a song about entrepreneurship. And actually, I should make a whole album about entrepreneurship. So in that two days, I wrote and recorded two songs. And I submitted those as part of the Big Idea Awards with the sort of like, you know, in my, in my submission, I wrote up like this vision to do the first hip hop album for startups. But what I did was I kind of, I branded it as Schoolhouse Rock for startups. So the idea was to like teach pitch lessons, teach storytelling, branding lessons, but through rap. And that was, and that got me into the finalists, right? Like it was, I think 10 people were, were uh, declared finalists. And then they had this big event at at this club in Chicago where you like exhibited. And so my exhibit was literally like, I had the, I had my desktop monitor I brought in, I had garage band pulled up with headphones. And then I just had like my, my recording mic next to it for the look. And you could listen to the two songs that I had made. And then I was just telling people about, hey, here's what I've got. Here's the idea I've got in mind. So I didn't win the whole thing, but that was like the initial, like, hey, there's, there's something here. And I just, I tabled it after that because I was kind of like, I don't have the time to do this. And that was the first year of running Startup Hype Man. So as much as I maybe wanted to, I really just needed to focus on how do I make this company work and how do I get, how do I make sales? 
so it just kept getting like pushed and I would drop a song here or there. And I, I, I always kind of had in the back of my head, I want to do this at some point. And then over time it evolved to, well, it doesn't need to be schoolhouse rock. It doesn't need to teach people things. It doesn't need to be like instructional. It can be something that's relational, right? Something that you, you listen to because it's going to resonate with you because it's emotion, not because you're trying to necessarily learn techniques of how to be a better entrepreneur or how to pitch your startup from that. So as you recall, right, just over the years, I would just drop a song here or there. Some of them were parodies. Some of them were originals. Uh, I actually, back in 2018, I took one of the songs, one of those two songs that I submitted for the Big Idea Awards and made a music video out of it. Um, and that was called Wake Up, Raise Up. And that was the song that was meant to be the kind of like the, the anthem for women and minority founders uh, who, who constantly get looked over. And that, you know, that had a pretty big um, exposure on LinkedIn, which is, I think, the only place I released it. So I, I knew there was something here. I think it was a matter of just needing to be able to be in a place with the business where I'm like, I can do this now. And I think part of that too is the more I ran Startup Hype Man and committed to it over the years, because admittedly, there were a few years in there where I was like, do I need to shut this down and go do something else? Um, I, I think the confidence picked up over time and just the, the knowledge picked up over time as well. Because what you have now in this album, Go to Market, it is... It's a combination of my lived experience combined with what I have extracted working in the trenches with and alongside founders for the last almost a decade. And I think if I had tried to pull this off in 2018 or whatever, I just didn't have as much of the I didn't have as much of the experience myself as an entrepreneur. And I was not yet working in a, in around enough entrepreneurs to be able to pull from different uh, aspects. Because so much of what, like, like, you know, all the lyrics throughout this album are, again, it's either me hitting on something that actually did happen or, tang or, or is, rela is related enough to what happened to me in my life, or it's something I know because I've had a conversation with a founder, or I've seen them in, in a certain situation, and I know that that's what they're going through. And if I tried to do this five, six years ago, I just don't think I had enough of that exposure yet. So now I think, you know, when we started working on this project, which is, I think, probably taken about a year to, to really bring together, um, it was the right time because the business was thriving. So I could spend time on this and not feel like it was a distraction, but actually feel like it is, it's marketing, right? It's content and it's something that's only going to help. So the business was thriving combined with enough exposure to be like, I can do this and I can make sure that this is going to be done right. It's not going to be done half-ass. And on top of that, it's going to be something that the people who listen to it are going to vibe with. I love how you brought it all around there because as soon as you started telling that story, the first thing that came to mind was... Yes. This idea that when you're starting a company, it is so relatable that you have infinity things that you want to do and you really need to zero in on 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 where to get the bread. <laughs> like yeah. on buttering the bread and making that happen. And it brings me back to this conversation. And you know, you you went all the way around to this idea of because you've been in the game, because you are a founder of your own successful company, surrounded by founders of other successful companies. And because there's been enough of a timeline to go through one cycle, at least of entrepreneurship, it brings me back to this conversation that you and I had when I'm like, dude, you are, you are the only guy that can bring this to life, right? Like there is no other, there is no other founder out there that has the rap skills and has had enough success and time in the game to have like bought a house because of you being self-employed to do this. And it, and it makes me think that if you would have done this album at any other point, and we'll, we'll talk about what like the flow of the album is and all that stuff. But if you would have done this at any other point in your life, the whole vibe would have been thankless or the whole vibe would have been, <laughs> I can be anything or, you know, but this thing <laughs> has the whole story arc because of everything that you said, man. I think, I think that's, 
I think that's spot on. And, and well, on that point, I think yeah. to your point of the whole vibe would have been thankless or I can be anything. What that, what that almost evokes is like, I don't say this in a bad way. I'm like, this is really the reality of what it would have been if we did this too early was it would have been an entire album that just feels like complaining. Yeah. And no, no, you don't want to hear people complain the whole time. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, totally, man. Totally. Um, and yeah, it makes it, it makes it profoundly relatable, man. And I, and I think that this, there is a, there is a very beautiful kind of harmony between, I think, what hip hop stands for and how it came to be and the entrepreneurial culture of, I think, this last generation is, is a whole generation of people that are like, work isn't working for me the way that it used to work for everybody else. And we got to go like be seen and make it happen. And I, I, I feel like an extreme kind of like kinship between that feeling and my teenage angst of listening to the first couple of NWA albums and feeling <laughs> like, you know, people are out there just saying, nah, man, you know, like what, what came before me isn't me anymore. And, and it's time to, to redefine this paradigm. Tell me about that final rant in, in Sincerely Yours. Like when I started Startup Hype Man, it was just because I had a skill and I wanted to make some money. And now I don't know if you realize, but like, I feel like it is my obligation and responsibility to be the voice and help champion the voice of every single one of you founders out here doing your thing every single day, building your dreams, making it a reality to impact the lives of others. I just have so much respect for that. And I just, I want you to know how seriously I take carrying that flag on behalf of you. And I thank you for entrusting me to carry that flag and just like, this is this is just the beginning, okay? GTM two is already in the works, GTM okay? Two. Like it's only going up into the right from here, hockey stick style. Tell me a little bit about what that final rant came from and how you've thought about it since. Reality is that wasn't that part wasn't written down. That was just off the dome, and I really felt when I was in that that closing rant and the, the last song on the album, these words were really just coming through me, and it helped crystallize something that. Until that moment, I hadn't I hadn't put into words. And as I say in in the in that end of that song, it's like I I started this company, Startup Hype Man, several years ago, which is working with these entrepreneurs on their pitch because I literally I realized I had a skill and I could make money off of it. It was very. I mean, do I do I enjoy helping people? Of course, but it was kind of like. Okay, here's the next here's the next thing I can do to make money. Cuz I have at this point realized in life getting a job is the I know I'm way too whatever about me that getting a job is is not going to last very long. So here's the next thing I can do before I absolutely have to go get a job if it doesn't work out. So it was it was make a quick buck. And over the years really what it evolved to is just feeling like Myself, this brand, Startup Hype Man, is here to be the voice and to help champion all of these entrepreneurs' voices out there who are struggling, who aren't feeling themselves as much as they should, who are succeeding but need to know, need people to know they are succeeding, right? Someone who understands the, the life at a deep intimate level. And that's what I think Startup Hype Man is out here to do now is to be the flag bearer on behalf of everyone who's you know running a company in this startup game, which is absolutely brutal and vicious most of the time. Uh, but it's you know over glamorized otherwise. And it, it does have its amazing points. But it's something that you know you need to have that level of empathy. And I think that's what I've been able to develop over the years. And that's what I see is like we are carrying the flag and we are forming the battlefield behind us. And I just, I love that because to me, it's, it's this huge shift in thinking because the first few years in running this company, when it was like, are we going to make it? Can we do it? Is this going to work? The, the question that I keep asking then is why, 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 like why me? Right. Of all people, why me? 
Now the flip, now that this thing has been going strong for the last few years, and I, I say this knowing that at any point the rug can be pulled under you, <laughs> but feeling like we're on that upward trajectory, the question before was why? The question now is why not? And that's a huge shift in thinking because why is doubt? Why not is confidence. Why not is vibes, right? Why not is let's get this. We know what we're doing. Let, let's do it. And that's why I also realized this is the way, you know, in building the company to take a step away from the album for a moment, just in building the company, startup hype, man, I was like, I need to grow this to where we're employing people. Because can it be okay and fine if it's kind of just me and my freelance team? Yeah, it can. And I can live a pretty comfortable life. But I got to give this a shot at fulfilling the true mission here and the vision of like, if we're going to carry that flag, we got to try and build a team around it, like a real team around it. And that's where, you know, we hired our first full time employee this year. And that's the vision moving forward is to continue to grow this thing to be able to employ more people and make it more than just myself, but really be able to stretch our wings and and support as much of this ecosystem as as effing possible. It's cool, man. It's really cool because what you are saying right now, this idea of going from the the why to the why not, as I as I watch your journey. And again, on this theme of like, there's nobody else I could bring this to life but you because of this combination of things and how long you've been in the game as somebody that's been in the game for four years, right? And I'm I'm starting to, I just feel like I crossed my, my bridge of from why to why not. And the way that I, the way that I put it, like I'm, I'm just getting into that point where I feel like I'm making a handsome living off of my thing and not just like sacrificing myself every day to make less money in order to build something because I know who I am and I don't want to go to work for somebody else again, right? <laughs> yeah, um, just dying on your own sword, yeah. Yeah, just dying on my own Martyring sword. Yourself, right? Martyring Constantly yourself. wondering wh- why I don't go to go take a job, right? To yep. this to this point that is I think a threshold that all founders cross, which is this idea of this is a journey of self-worth, right? Like the first, the first like hypothesis you have is like, I, th- I think I'm, I think I'm worth more than just working for somebody else. And at some point in there, you make enough mistakes of like the way that you value yourself to get to the point where you truly value yourself. And that's like the flip to to the why not. It's like, nah, dog, like other people, you know, at first it's like other people can do it. Um, so I think I can do it. And then at some point you're like, no, 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 it's not that it doesn't matter if other people are doing it or not. It's just that like, I can do this and, 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 and let's move forward. Right. And it, and you now, I, it sounds like you've been in business for about like seven years, right? Something like that. Yeah. 20 unofficially 2016, officially 2017. So like six, seven years. Yeah. 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 I could see how in, in the journey, as it goes forward, you know, you, you go through the cycle and now you're at this point where it's like, not just have you found the self-worth, but you've also found like the wherewithal to then like now grow this thing beyond yourself and like have real permanence around it and do all these different things. And it's just a very, it's a very, it's a story that really just resonates, man. And all right. So then story of the album et al, right? Like, I think it's funny that you were talking about like the schoolhouse rock thing because, and then you evolve from like, oh, I don't have to like teach anything in my rap songs. I can just make rap songs feels kind of parallel to the evolution of this album, right? Like I remember at first it was just kind of like we had this, you had like a a real narrative that it felt like you wanted to tell this like concise story through like rapping in five songs. And then it evolved a little bit beyond that. You want to tell me a little bit kind of like how the story of the album is now and what it, what it started off as for you? Yeah. I think the, like the direction originally was, this is a concept album. Like we're telling a story arc throughout it. Now, ultimately, that that really is it is a concept album, and we are telling a story across seven, eight songs. But I think what's funny is it became easier to create that once we kind of let it breathe a little bit and pulled the reins back on being like, it has to be this. Yeah. 
Um, cause I remember some of our early conversations, I was like, okay, well, so the character in this plot is at this point in their journey. So that means only these lyrics can be talked about. And that's where you were kind of just like, well, dude, no, like it doesn't have to be a hundred percent of like the timeline doesn't have to match a hundred percent throughout every aspect of every song. And that I think is where the creativity really opened up and allowed this thing to come together where we're telling a story, but it doesn't feel like the story is being forced upon you. And I think that's a, that's a huge difference. Yeah. 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 That's true, man. I remember you sending me um, Lupe Fiasco's album as like a big inspiration of this thing. The cool. Yeah. And yeah, the cool. And, and you kind of going into like the dynamics of like, the villain in the album and all these different things and how, how kind of deeply you thought about it. Tell me, tell me about, tell me about what the story was that you thought about for this album and like how you, how you thought about it in your head. Yeah. Well, and that is what ultimately came forth. We, again, we just figured out the right way where it's not being forced on you. Yeah. And if you're not following along necessarily, if you're listening for enjoyment, it, you'll, it's still also fine. Yeah. Um, the idea here is that this is the story of a founder who realizes they want to start a company and they have the big dream and they go on their path of the ups and the downs to try and get to that point with, with the realization up front that like the goal, quote unquote, is raise capital so we, we can really do something big. So that's the that's the story that this takes, and that's how the that's how the the, the narratives in each song, the sub narratives, unfold from there. So track number one, I can be anything, right? That's kind of like that first thing you think. It's you know you, you have this like blue sky vision, and you you kind of feel a level of like invincible, but at the same time with doubting yourself. So that song is the perfect sort of, um, how should I say, like, that, like, hey, I'm taking the step forward to do this. Mm -hmm. Now, we ended up recording the intro track before that, which I think makes the whole thing even better because now you hit with something that is like, it's in your face. And so what we, where we kind of made the adjustment was the intro is... It's almost like the real I can be anything before you've realized what it's actually about. And I can be anything is like the I'm willing to work for this. Whereas the intro is F all y'all, <laughs> I'm doing this. And, and I can be anything is, is the I, I know I need to put in the work for this, but I'm willing to do that because I'm 100% committed. And then from there, we go into thankless, which is like, you start feeling yourself because you're like, I'm out here, I'm doing this. And regardless of what people are saying to you in that point in your journey, you're like, no, no, it's cool. I got it. Hey, I hope you've been enjoying the conversation on making the goat thus far. We still have a whole lot more to dive into on this song in this episode. But before we go any further, I want to just pause and let you know about a partner who was instrumental in helping bring the album to life, a partner who's been instrumental on this podcast and supporting it, and just who's been overall a huge supporter of Startup Hype Man's overall goat to market platform. And that partner of ours is Akeva, and I want them to become your partner in software development. And if you do that, they're going to help you go from zero to one. Whether that's blockchain or no chain, Web3 or Web2, mobile apps or SaaS, Akeva builds it at startup speed and enterprise level refinement and class. That's why startups like Stride Health, Haveno, Olive Side, and so many more have trusted Akeva from their first dollar all the way up to their billion dollar valuation. And they're ready to help you become the goat to market. I've sent a bunch of startups Akeva's way. They've all been so grateful for the connection and they have a killer offer for you. It's called a You Call It Code Review. What does that mean? A cable will review the most critical parts of your code so you can see exactly what your tech needs to launch or scale. And they'll do this completely free and then you call it from there. So you wanna handle things on your own? You call it. Wanna get a Kava's dev help? You call it. Wanna take it somewhere else? You call it. 
It's an unbeatable offer. And like I said, they've been Startup Hype Man's partner in supporting the Goat to Market platform. They even get a shout out in one of the songs on the album. And I want them to become your partner in software development. Ready to see if you qualify for a You Call It Code review? Well, just fill out the inquiry form on their website at akava.io. That's A-K-A-V-A dot I-O. Akava dot I-O. And tell them Startup Hype Man sent you. Back now to the conversation. So then from there, we go into the NXT. And this is where it kind of shifts a little bit. And NXT is, it's this like proclamation, NXT meaning the next, right? That I'm the next big thing. So like, you know, I'm going to swing my big energy all around kind of thing. (laughs) But at the same time, God, this is a grind. Like, holy shit. How much longer is it going to take for pe- for everyone else to realize I'm the next big thing? And you start and, and like a lot of that doubt starts to creep in in that song. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it, you know, we'll get into that. But when you listen to those lyrics, you'll see it's this combination of like totally cocky, arrogant statements combined with the things that cut at your ego because the grind is a grind and you're like, oh, I thought it would happen by now, but it hasn't happened by now. And how long, how much longer is it going to take that kind of stuff? Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's cocky, but it's also lashing out. Yeah. 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 As we get into dry powder, the next track, this is where it's, it's deep in the war trenches of that trying to raise capital game where now it's an obsession and everything you're doing is orbiting around this goal of raising capital and you are, you're addicted to it, right? That's the idea behind the, just the double entendre in the song is that this is an addiction that you can't shake. Uh, and you know, you're just like looking for that fix. You're looking for that hit, which then gets us into, I get around, which is, you know, that's also a play on words. I get around all with spaces in between each word where now you're like, you've kind of mastered the obsession and, or the addiction. Like you're on top of it. You've got it handled and you know exactly what to do. And you're like, this is my path to go for it. So get out of my way. And you do that, which, which sets us up for the end, Sincerely Yours, which is like, it's the we made it song, right? Like we did it. Here we are. Come, come hang out with us. Come party with us. We out here. I love it, man. I, you know, my, the first, the first vision was like this idea of, I have this big idea. Then it was, you know, get in it, start building it. Then it's like, you're finding product market fit. Then, then you're actually like making really good money on it. And then it's like the post exit thing. And I love when you unlock this idea of, it doesn't have to necessarily go through it, you know, like, and, and stick to it per song. I thought it added a lot to it. And the other, the other part of it is I'm you, it became very clear to me that you are a more sophisticated consumer of hip hop than I am and practitioner of it, of course. And you pay a lot of attention to lyrics and stories inside songs while I see myself as more of a typical hip hop consumer where I'm just very much like into the feel of it. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I feel like you are, you're like very biggie and I'm more like Tupac. Like I like to feel it, you know? (laughs) And, um, and I think it's also reflected in the, in the album, right? Like in the, like the, like the rhythm of it all. And there's just kind of like a, the intro track is almost like, I think before you start your own company, you think you're the shit inside someone else's company. And therefore you have this naivety, naivety yeah. to like, go think you can be anything. Right. So like it, it has this like rhythm of just like, I'm the shit. Then it's like, I think I'm this like super special butterfly kind of like um, feeling. Then it just starts getting a little bit more and more rising tension on the beat yeah. to finally the, the party album at the end, which is, which is really the, the thing that I most focused on and um, cause I knew you had the lyrics handled and, and I love the, I love the pace of the album and and you're right. I think, I think putting in that intro song before 
before I can be anything really rounded at all out really well to start off at this high tempo and then slow down and crescendo again to the party album, which I thought well, was those really middle cool. songs, right? They start to get a little bit like maniacal, like, like, yeah, was it five, uh, four, five, and six? Yeah, get, right. They start to really, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a level of angst that you feel. Yeah. And that's being pushed through in the lyrics. And I also think as we, as we were putting this whole thing together and figuring out like, how should the beat be right? Like what, what should we do for this song, for this song, et cetera. What I was intentional about was not just what's going to sound, what do I need to sound like to match these lyrics that I have in my head? Mm -hmm. But more than that, it was, how do you how do you let the music itself the beat match with the emotion that's trying to be evoked here so you take uh i can be anything right that's like you've got this blue sky vision you're like i'm willing to do anything the sound of that song is a lot more like clear right it's it's got like a refined production to it versus the NXT, we kind of were intentionally made it like this lo-fi sounding song because you're so in your own head in that song. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you have the clear vision, the, the beat sounds clear. It's got more production on it, right? There's, there's vocal filters. There's, there's echoes. There's, there's all those kinds of things. There, there's, um, there's, there's backing vocals that are hitting you know, on words double time, that kind of thing. And you get to NXT and it's like, it's gritty, right? Yeah. It it you I don't think we did really any post production on it other than just like you know refining some like peaks that kind of thing. I mean, there, you were no. like, give me a simple beat that I can just dominate with lyrics. I remember when you put that out there, I had no idea what you meant, and but yeah, totally, yeah, man, was, yeah, yeah, because because it's like it's a million thoughts running through your head all at once that you're that that you're, that's being spewed out, right? That's what the that's what the idea behind that is, and then like with with I get around, it's like. Oh, like that that thing hits because it's meant to be like you feel that shit in your chest and you're like let's fucking go let's do this yeah right so like we played around with how the music sounds so the album really what i what i really like and how this came together is how much how many different sounds come through with that and then even like what does that mean for the lyrics too so like dry powder right we talk about the obsession when you have that level of addiction and obsession, you can't do, how should I say this? You have that level of addiction and obsession. You don't have the ability to have the most deep, intricate um, uh, way of like uh, communicating. So, while the lyrics are incredibly meaningful and have so many double meanings behind them, the rhyme scheme is not that advanced, right? Yeah. Whereas in NXT, when you're like so in your head, you got a million thoughts, there's like, there's so, the rhyme scheme is so much more advanced. And I'd even say in NXT too, because it's like you're, you're just trying to get these thoughts out of your head, you'll notice there's breaks in certain lines. Right. And like, yeah. it doesn't pick up exactly on the beat at all times because it's meant to evoke that like running thoughts in your head, which are very much unfiltered thoughts. Yeah, it's cool, man. Let's talk about the title of the album, man. Let's, let's talk about the whole, the whole kind of yeah. like branding and title of it. Right. Like talk to me about that, man. T how'd that evolve? The original title for this, if you recall, was going to be burn rate. Yeah, that's right. And then I had this vision with the with the company with Startup Hype Man to create this goat to market platform, and I don't know. Just one day, those words came to me last year, back in 2022, and then I literally I remember like with my team, I like mapped out. I had a PowerPoint slide up, and I was like, "It's going to be this. It's going to be this. It's going to be this." And then we'll fuel it all with this album. And I was like, "And the album will be called Goat to Market." So then, just on a dime, I switched. I remember. I remember one day you texted me. You're like, why do you say goat to market? I thought the album was called burn rate. And I was like, no, 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 it's called goat to market. <laughs> yeah. And I think it just, I think it hits better. It, it's, you know, it's, I think it, it, how should I put it? It, um, everyone knows what goat is. Yeah. So it's got that nice play on words. And 
I think from here, what it moves forward is this is just GTM one and GTM two very likely could be a GTM two burn rate. Yeah. Yeah. Have you thought about what GTM two can look like in the future? Like, I mean, this was, this felt like it was about a year and a half to two years of working on this thing. Right. Which I think makes sense. Cause that's around how often bands put out albums. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, do you think you need to have more time in the cycle right now to come up with more founder experiences and stuff like that? Or do you think you have enough to start thinking of what GTM two will look like and the rest will come with it? I already have two or three of the songs in my head Tell me more. And, and, I, and on my voice notes app that I've just like spoken or like hummed into it yeah. uh, for the next album. The interesting thing is, it's this album ends on a celebrate a celebratory note, mm -hmm. but all they're celebrating is step one in the process, really. Yeah. So you think it's all going to be figured out from there. You raise that that big round of capital. Now, GTM two. It's like okay, well, the real work is just beginning. Yeah. So I don't know. I think um, we'll see how it comes together. My early thoughts are that GTM two might be almost like a little bit of like a darker album mm -hmm. um, with, and I think what's also cool is my own entrepreneurial experience will now have a little bit more evolution to it. Right. And now running payroll regularly, right. Which every founder is like, Oh my God, are we going to make payroll? That kind of stuff. So yeah. some of those more like advanced themes might start to come in and you know, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now, but, uh, there, there's already some ideas that, that I'm cooking up here. <laughs>